Welcome to the Great British Quilter podcast. I'm Sarah Ashford, and as a modern quilter and founder of the Great British Quilter Instagram Challenge, I've spent the last three years galvanising and championing British quilters and the quilting industry. In this series, I speak to British quilt designers, fabric companies, publishers and shop owners to discover their behind-the-scenes stories and to discuss what it means to be a part of the British quilting community today. Enormous thanks go to my two sponsors for this episode, Orofil Thread and Stitchtopia Craft Holidays. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about them. Orofil is an Italian thread company specialising in superior quality cotton threads for professional and domestic quilters. With a wide range of threads in varying weights and a beautiful spectrum of colours, quilters can find the perfect thread for their project. Do visit orofil.com for more information. Stitchtopia Craft Holidays are part of the Arena Travel brand, offering stitching, knitting, crochet, cross-stitch and embroidery holidays in the UK, Europe and worldwide. Each tour is accompanied by an expert in the craft and workshops with the expert are included on most tours, which often also include exclusive behind-the-scenes visits. For more information on these fantastic tours, visit arenatravel.com. My guest today is Karen Lewis. Karen is a screen printer, author of Screen Printing at Home and Wabby Sabby Sewing, a Robert Kaufman designer and quilter living in Leeds with her husband and three virtually grown-up children and much-adored cockapoo scout. Her work is regularly seen in Love Patchwork and Quilting and Today's Quilter magazines. As well as running her workshops in her home in Leeds, she has taught at the Fat Quarterly Retreat and around the UK, as well as in Denmark and at QuiltCon and Sotopia in the US. Karen is one half of the UK retreat company, The Thread House with Joe Avery. Karen was brought up in Leeds, West Yorkshire, where she learned to sew and knit with her grandmother. It was several years later, after turning her back on her formal education and teaching career, that she came back to her crafting roots. While living and teaching in London, Karen met her husband and together they brought up their three children, but when they moved back to Leeds in 2014, she left her teaching career behind and started her crafting business, Blueberry Park. Karen always had a passion for textiles, pattern and colour, and after a brief silk screen printing course in 2011, she set about teaching herself more about this technique in order to design her own fabric. Karen's obsession with screen printing set in and soon she was printing and designing all day, every day, perfecting her skills. She was using her fabrics in her own work as well and selling to other quilters and crafters. With her passion for screen printing and her skills as a teacher, she started to run screen printing workshops, passing on her skills and teaching others how to design fabric and screen print, particularly at home with little specialist equipment and space. In 2014, Karen brought out her first book, Screen Printing at Home, teaching the reader all they need to know and what to do to produce great screen prints from the kitchen table. Last year, Karen's second book, Wabby Sabby Sewing, came out, where she designed a selection of sewing projects inspired by the Wabby Sabby ethos of finding beauty in the ordinary, repairing rather than discarding, and appreciating the perfectly imperfect. In 2015, Karen brought out her first fabric collection, Blueberry Park, with Robert Kaufman, and has just released her fourth collection, Wayside, which is available in stores now. Karen enjoys working with Orofil, pairing her fabric collections with their threads, and she has now produced three collections to sit alongside her fabric. Karen is also the featured designer for the 2020 Quilters Planner. I've known Karen for about five years now, and we've travelled to the States together a couple of times for the Modern Quilt Guild show QuiltCon, as well as meeting up at various quilt retreats, and of course the Festival of Quilts in Birmingham, where we recorded this interview. Interviewing Karen was like chatting with an old friend. She's so easygoing and relaxed. I hope you enjoy listening and learning about her creative journey. 
Morning, Karen. Morning, Sarah. Oh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. So we're here at the Festival of Quilts. We've managed to find a quiet spot. Uh, it was a little tricky, but we've managed it. And um, I'm really looking forward to talking to you. Um, so you're so busy doing so many things. Um, can you tell us um, from the beginning, how did you get into quilting? Um, how did you get to where you are today? Wow, so have you got time to listen to this? It's quite a story, as we all have. Um, So I never did any quilting when I was young, um, apart from a EPP project with Laura Ashley fabrics and hexes that I think we all possess somewhere in our back catalogue of of, uh, sewing. Um, I don't even know what happened to that. I think it probably got binned by my mum, who was forever tidying up. Um, So I didn't really do sewing properly as a child, quilting as a child. I was taught to sew and knit by my grandma and had lots of hours and endless days of playing at sewing. Um, And it was really only when I finished work, finished teaching, um, to have a career break when I had my three children, that I really got into quilting. Um, I had started a company called Blueberry Park, which some of you may remember, which was um, sourcing and selling all handmade products, mainly British. So I was... uh, looking for British artists and it could have been anything from ceramics to textiles to jewellery all sorts of things, it was fantastic and met a lot of wonderful people along the way and um, when I started Blueberry Park I started to do more of my own sewing getting back into it and um, it was it was really that journey that got me into quilting as I was sourcing and looking at all other textile artists and I was down the rabbit hole whole of the internet and yes. discovered Flickr in those days and um, eventually came across this our quilting community on Flickr which was fantastic it was you know one of those wonderful starting places and I got really really keen on researching it and trying it and um, having a play and buying more and more fabrics and um, really that that was the days that started my quilting journey so that's probably about gosh 10 12 years ago now yeah um and at first when I started quilting I didn't have a rotary cutter I didn't have a cutting mat it was all literally cutting so, out so with scissors so many of us started that way didn't we Absolutely. we just didn't know any different did we didn't we? No. we really didn't and actually it um it's quite interesting because even though I do have a rotary cutter and a cutting mat now and I do cut out my things properly <laughs> um actually the quilting style that I started with it was probably similar and I haven't departed too far from that, even though I have all the right equipment to do it with. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so what inspired you to start screen printing? Um, is this something you do every day? Um, and has your style changed over time? Well, you were just saying that you feel like actually you've been quite true to your to yourself throughout your quilting and screen printing journey. So. I, I think I have. I think we all have a default um, style of whether it's colour, whether it's pattern, whether it's design. And I think, well, I personally always fall back towards that. I mean, I think my style has evolved amongst the same kind of path um, and going back to your first question first part of the question um, how did I start screen printing so I was um, during the blueberry part days when I'd stopped working and um, sourcing other people's products I was doing more and more of my own and I was um, blueberry park eventually became my Um, showcase and shop for selling and making my things and at that time I had sourced a lot of wonderful screen printers um, around the world and using their I loved the um, I love the sensory element of of hand printed fabrics I love that extra quality they give Mm -hmm. and I was always drawn to hand printed products and fabrics and um, I was using a lot of other people's fabrics in my work and making things and selling them and it came a point when I decided actually I wanted things to be identifiable as mine and not just my products using so-and-so's fabrics I wanted the whole thing to be 
recognises that's Karen Lewis's work. Um, so I thought, well, I better learn how to screen print. And right. I went on a course which was a six-week, one, three hours a week session so I had six sessions of three hours a week and literally from the minute I started was completely bowled over by it and enamored I just absolutely loved it and haven't stopped since no not at all yeah and you still have your um, screen printed fabrics now I do yeah I Um, do yes we'll talk about that a bit later on Um, so um, you've got a new fabric collection out with Robert Kaufman called Wayside Um, can you tell us how your collaboration with Robert Kaufman came about Um, and a little bit about each of your collections I think you've got four collections now I do yeah I do Um, so it came about I was selling um, my own hand printed fabrics and which was brilliant you know had lots of amazing customers and people wanting to use them in their own quilting and projects which was fantastic um so I was and I used Kona cotton a lot and because it enabled you to print something and make it different every time on a different colored background um so I did a lot of um using their fabrics and I had their color charts and one day I just thought I need to see how it looks on every single colour <laughs> so I printed over the top of my Kona chart which I still have today oh, wow. and just it was just fantastic it was like oh wow I've just printed on every single colour of Kona um, and at that time I had a um, relationship with a couple of the uh, people at Kaufman and one of them spotted it wow. and uh, showed it to somebody else and they were they thought this was great this was going to work Mm. and it was a new process for them which was wonderful um of overprinting onto their bolts of colored kona that they had sitting there and um yeah that's how it began and the rest is history, the rest really. is history I mean, it's been so yes. popular and I, seen all over the world i know which is such a thrill it never gets old no. as you will find with your new collection um it's it is it's such a privilege to have fabrics that other people are incorporating in their work it's it really is um and we started off with the first collection blueberry park blueberry park one it's now become known as because uh-huh. there's a two and a three right um and we decided on six of my designs that were going to be used to overprint on the kona and because the kona was there it was really hard to cut it down to the normal 20 skews in a collection so that first collection was 74 skews big That's which is lot. quite mammoth yes um and provides something for everybody i mean i remember the, is, the the bundles they were they were huge they were massive and they were beautiful yeah. and people loved them yeah and they they did with the color you know going through it was they did they look great they really did yes so that was the first collection and then we did a reverse color collection for the second one where we printed in colored ink onto white Mm -hmm. kona using the same design so that was really nice because they then worked really well together um and then the third one we changed the palette a little bit i don't know if you noticed that so we moved away slightly from the traditional rainbow and everything in between to a more gray a hue through it which is probably more of my go-to kind of colors and we brought in two new designs into that collection um and then the fourth collection which has just been launched yes. wayside um is very different um but i think works really well with the others as well and it's had a great response already i know it has it, it really has it's lovely people have a little bit of glitter and it's got it's all got sorts of silver it, and, and gold elements mm. which is really nice oh fabulous yes. i can't wait to, to make some things with yeah it. that would be I fantastic have. you have made a little project with it you have it's, yeah it's great yes. but i think also it's great with other fabrics like you say your previous collections as well yeah and, I think it will blend and other, people's, with fabrics, other people's fabrics definitely yeah. definitely you definitely need to have that in your stash i think you do. yes <laughs> do (laughs) oh brilliant so it's recently been announced that you're the featured designer for the quilters planner Um, as you know I'm part of the quilters planner team um, and I absolutely love the planner Um, but can you tell our listeners a little bit more about the planner and your work with them as a featured designer this year yes it's such if you don't know the quilters planner 
you really need to get one because it has revolutionised my life. And mine, I have to in say. In terms <laughs> of having everything in one place. Yeah. I would have so many lists of pieces of paper that got scattered everywhere. All sorts for the home, for my work, for planning quilts and projects. They'd all be on different pieces of paper and it was actually a miracle I ever got anything done. <laughs> and then the planner came along and it is just such a brilliant, brilliant um, journal and um, record keeping and calendar all in one it's just fantastic and Stephanie um, has done a brilliant job as have Kitty and you and all the team and Lindsay um, to make this thing that's not just looks beautiful but it's so so useful yeah Yeah. absolutely Um, it's never far from my sight so for Stephanie to ask me to be featured designer was such an honour such a thrill really really you know one of the best things really amazing um you've designed a sampler quilt so i've you? designed a sampler quilt that um will be a quilt along is that yes, right through right, the year January, yes. you get a, you do a block at a time there's yes, 12, 12 blocks, blocks that's right. um in two colorways which is fantastic and katie um made the sample sampler quilts which look fantastic um so that's a really great addition to it and oh it was such a fun process of designing it um and working with the team and getting it getting it how well having choice of making my own planner was was absolutely fantastic yeah we're so excited to launch the 2020 planner and yeah it looks fabulous you've done a great job thank you So, um, as a former teacher, you love being in the classroom, uh, teaching screen printing and quilting. Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about your teaching? And you run um, quilting retreats with Jo Avery, one of my previous guests. I do. Yeah, so Jo and I run the Thread House, um, and we do, now, we do two a year. We have a winter retreat down in Bristol, and we have a summer retreat up in the beautiful Yorkshire Dales, um, and the winter retreat is a bigger venue bigger event and it's all back-to-back classes um, you can opt out of the classes we don't make you sit there and do the classes if you don't want to but we do provide full-on um workshops, workshops and, yeah. throughout the whole weekend mm-hmm. so you can you know learn a lot and we have guests coming as well to teach and it's a great event it's a lovely escape from your life and you know get away in the countryside it's, it's really really lovely it is absolutely you love absolutely it is no interruptions all exactly weekend. it is it's great and then the summer retreat which we've just come back from our first one um is similar in the fact that it's in the middle of nowhere you're really retreating away but it's a much more intimate smaller affair mm-hmm. And we have a little bit of teaching from Joe and myself, um, but essentially it's bring your projects, get on with what you want to get on with, chat, meet and hang out with like-minded people and quilting friends, and just have a great time and be fed well. It We're sounds, fed very well there. It sounds fabulous. You can't ask for more. You can can't. You? No. you really can't. No. Um, so yeah, that's that's our retreats. And then you you asked me about teaching. Yes. So I you think love teaching. You've got I do. Teaching. I do. I love teaching, and I loved being. Well, Sarah and I talked about this the other day. That um, we love the concept of teaching yes. in schools. It can be challenging. Um, so to actually teach people who want to want to learn learn and grow and be creative absolutely it's a very different experience it is it it absolutely is so it's it's an absolute privilege to be able to you know pass on skills and and pass on you know the love of of what I do and I really I love doing it I really enjoy it I've taught quite a bit around the UK and Denmark and at Quilcon and Sotopia um so it's it's it, it every time I learn something from it and you know you're meeting a different group of people with different skills and different ideas and I've been in your classes and it's amazing to see you can do the same class with a different absolutely set of people and the outcomes are so different it's amazing so i must have taught hundreds of printers now yes. hundreds of printers and every single and what i do after a class is they do a sample of theirs yes. on a on a you know length of fabric and i hold all those up and you can actually see 
that every single class is different. different. It's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Isn't so it? everybody is very talented. Um, You're un- unleashing their talent, aren't you? <laughs> That's what we try. Yes. So, what else have you got lined up for this year? What can we look forward to from so you? So, the rest of this year. So, Joe and I are going to Denmark um, in a few weeks, a couple of months. Um, teaching, doing a lecture together and both teaching. Uh, she'll obviously be doing her sewing teaching. I'll be printing. Mm-hmm. Although, we're doing new... Um, uh, workshops that I haven't done before well I've done them a little bit which is incorporating your own fabric into your own hand printed fabric into quilting okay, so nice. we're spending the first half of the day learning the skills of printing mm-hmm. and then the second half using your prints to sew nice. up various things lovely. so that's going to be great I did that in Sotopia and it was really successful it was lovely to see and, pe- and you get such a thrill from using your own fabric yes. as you know yes. and it's such an added extra oh, to Idea. create something from your own handwork everything being from you absolutely uh, so that's in october you've got your thread collection wayside thread yes. collection, which obviously is launched this weekend at yes the festival. yes so that's my third box with orophil who yes. uh, are fantastic and always open for ideas of collaborating and so what weight of thread is that is it uh, it's all 50 weight so right. the new box is all 50 weight yes. it's um 10 small spools all coordinate with the wayside and that's just for regular piecing regular for those piecing who don't necessarily understand yes. the, the yes. numbers it's yes. just for the regular piecing and yes. patchwork yes so that's regular piecing and also hand um machine quilting yes. they do show up really nicely on machine quilting yes so that works really well with the new wayside but it also because it's in really nice neutrals box with a little bit of extra subtle extras it works on Very any versatile. fabric so yeah it makes it really useful Brilliant. for lots of projects fabulous yes fantastic Karen so finally before we go we like to offer the listeners two top tips and I know you have many so you're <laughs> going to have to narrow them down to just two uh, what, what could you share with the uh, listeners well I think my first top tip being here at Festival of Quilts will have to be about how to manage being at such a busy show oh my goodness it's crazy it's quite overwhelming isn't it, it is it's overwhelming fabulous, but it's it absolutely is it is overwhelming and at times. there's so many people here that are in our little Instagram pictures and it's wonderful because everybody meets up and it's a really fantastic event with all the beautiful quilts and the shopping and it's a great event but it can be really overwhelming if you're not organized and um by nature I'm not a massively organized person (laughs) unlike you but I do like a list and I would really encourage you to make a list of how to navigate festival and, and have a plan, really. have a plan. Mm. so I have a list of people I want to see yes. um, and so and I have to remember to look at that as well yes. otherwise I so forget easy to get absolutely it, it so is and I have a list of things that I want to buy yes because I might only get have the opportunity to get those online normally yes so I have a list of those things um and what else do I have a list of I think that's probably it Some so quilts you want to see quilts I want to see in the yes. shows yes and exhibitions that you yes want to because there's so many different exhibitions as going on there um so yeah that would be a huge top tip mm. for navigating festival and you have to be realistic about how long you're here for and how much you can you do, do in that time as yes well, because you it can do be busy and it's, absolutely it does take time Absol- to and around. you get tired as the day goes on so I would also recommend getting to the show as early as possible when it's a bit quieter maybe going to see the quilts first thing when they're, it's a bit, a bit quieter, quieter and there's a bit more space and I think having a little break every now and again as well absolutely just to have a little bit of time out yes. and then you can come back with fresh eyes definitely. and appreciate it all definitely. again definitely yes. yes and if you don't see all of it it doesn't matter you know get do it at a pace that's not going right to for you isn't yeah. it that's it yes, yes. Yes. And what else? Have you got another so one? So my other top tip, yes. which um, is try not to be het up about perfection right. when you're quilting. Mm-hmm. But when you're doing anything, printing, quilting, sewing, there's times when you're making clothes or if you're making um, bags or something, if things need to be a little bit more perfect than others, but with quilting particularly, um, and I do this a lot in my, <coughs> excuse me, Wabi Sabi book, <coughs> Um, things don't have to be perfect to be beautiful 
you know, we want to really embrace the process. Yeah. And it's not all about the finished product. It's all about doing it, being with the fabrics, sewing the fabrics, and enjoying really it. enjoying what you're doing. If you're really het up on what it's going to look like at the end, it's and a long way perfect. before it's, you get to the end. Yeah. So you really want to enjoy the whole process. And if your flying geese don't quite meet, or your half square triangles, it's first of all, only you're going to see it. And second of all, it actually gives the eye something to focus on, rather than it being bland and perfect and you know you want these little bits of imperfection they're, they're to be character the day, aren't they? absolutely so yeah know, absolutely we're not machines so embrace the process and embrace being imperfectly perfect oh, or that's perfectly imperfect <laughs> that's yes. a great tip thank you karen thank well, you uh, sarah thank you so much for coming on the show and i know we've got a few hours left of the festival yet so yes, i hope you enjoy I'm going it to go visit some more quilts hope you've got your plan for the rest of the day <laughs> i'll have to look at it and i'm only here for a couple more hours so yes. i better look at my plan and see what hasn't been ticked off oh, go to see those that's great thank you so much Karen. thanks sarah thank you thank you once again to our generous sponsors orophil thread and stitchtopia craft holidays with their help we've been able to bring this podcast to you and we thoroughly hope you've enjoyed listening if you have it would be great if you would rate, review and subscribe to the Great British Quilter podcast. Please do tell your friends and spread the quilty love. Thank you. Thank you.